All right, so it's the 17th of July, 2016, and I'm standing here at the intersection of Sherbourne and Elm Avenue in Toronto. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a tour on my bike of the Sherbourne cycle track. All right, so it's a beautiful, sunny Sunday morning. And from this spot at the top of Sherbourne, we're gonna ride all the way down, down the hill towards Lake Ontario. So right, the area that we're in right now is known as Rosedale. It's the area that just north of Blue or kind of on the, the eastern side of Young Street. And the road we're coming up to here is Bluer, Bluer Street. And we've got a green light. See if I can make it across. Just barely. Now the cycle track does begin here, but there's some road construction going on. So, for our purposes, it starts here. So the reason that I chose this specific route is of course because it has a, a bike lane on it, but it's kind of a special bike lane. And then it's actually Toronto's first it was Toronto's first cycle track or protected bike lane. So as you can see, you know, the cyclist has, the cyclists have their own lane here. And there's actually a concrete divider on our left there, which divides the cycle track from the rest of the traffic. So this road we're coming up to here is called Isabella. The neighborhood that we're going through, at least on the the left side of where we are, on the west side, sorry, on the east side of Sherbourne, is known as St. Jamestown. Got a traffic light here to wait. So before Sherbourne was here, the only kind of bike infrastructure on the street that, that Toronto had were painted things like bike lanes, painted bike lanes, um, and like sharrows, which are just you know, just arrows of pictures of bikes, which don't really give cyclists a designated area. But even though this was the first protected bike lane, it wasn't without criticism from the cycling community. There's a fair number of complaints about it, but for the most part, I think it's pretty good. I've never commuted, I've never ridden on it like during uh, rush hour, like during when everyone's commuting by bike along here. But from what I understand, it gets very busy and it's kind of narrow, so it's not that easy to pass someone if they're going slow. That's one of the criticisms I've heard of. So that library, the thing on the left there is the St. James, St. James Town Library. And this is Wellesley Street. Now I did a video recently on Wellesley. See how there's a protected bike lane there? I did a video all the way along Wellesley, which then gets to Queen's Park and then it changes names to Hoskin and then it changes again to Harbord, which is a, another street and has bike lanes all the way along it. And most of them are protected at least with those bollards. So coming up on the right here, there's a building which has a glass awning at the front. Uh, which I guess is some kind of an office building, but underneath it, um, there is the, the Phoenix Concert, Concert Theater, which is a, a venue where lots of bands that tour come to and play. I've seen one concert there a number of years ago. And the road we're coming up to up here is called Carlton. And there's a park here on the right-hand side. I'm not sure what the name of that park is. I um, also noticed that there is a, uh, a rack of bikes over there on our right as well, just at the entrance of the park, one of our Toronto bike share racks. In, uh, in Toronto, we have the, the Toronto bike share, 
It used to be called the Bixie system. It's the same as what they have in lots of other cities where you you can you, you get a membership and you can or you just pay for the day and you can use the bike for as many 30 minute trips as you want. It's designed to replace a taxi. That's why they called them Bixies and originally bike taxi, Bixie. The idea was that if you just had to make a short little trip across town, you just grab a bike, use it for a bit, drop it off at another station and then it's there for someone else to use. And, and it's really exciting because they just recently expanded that system. I mean, it's not expanded to the level that um, a lot of us think it should be. I mean, it's not, not nowhere near as great coverage as, as in cities like Chicago or New York, but they did double the amount of uh, stations that they had, which is pretty impressive, and got quite a, quite a few new bikes as well. I'm just gonna get past these people. So it was easy for me to pass there because there wasn't actually a concrete divider at that point, but if there had been, it would have been a bit of a tight squeeze to get past. So this is Dundas Street East that we're just crossing, which is a, a major east-west street that crosses all the way across Toronto. It has a streetcar line that runs along it. <clears throat> So an interesting thing I'll show at this intersection here is there's a little blue sign above where I just rode explaining how this intersection works, but they actually have a special setup for bikes for cyclists to be able to make left turns. I'll just pull forward so you can kind of see it. But so see how the green paint continues through the intersection. And then there's a little box of green paint, which is to the right of that, which has a picture of a bike in it, right where I'm going towards right now. So if you're going to make a left turn, rather than, you know, switching into the, the center lane to make a turn and blocking off car traffic, or a lot of people don't feel comfortable moving into the middle of the road, you can just wait in that little box, and then when the intersection starts to change, or when the intersection does change, then you've got a green light, which allows you to go across there. So it's a, a good option. This area is known as Moss Park. That building on the right-hand side we just crossed uh, was the Moss Park Arena. And this is Queen Street. I'm just getting a red light here. Queen Street East. Which is another road which crosses a big section of Toronto and has a, a streetcar track on it. And there's our green light. And we're just approaching Richmond Street, which is another one that has bike lanes on it. Uh, protected bike lanes, actually, with, with bollards. And I did a video of it when they first put them in, although at that point, the Richmond and Adelaide bike lanes didn't come this far east. But now they've extended them all the way out, uh, actually beyond Sherborne all the way to the next street over which is called Parliament but unfortunately right now uh, a big section of the the Richmond Street one is, is closed because they're doing some construction on it but interestingly enough all the studies said that you know when they put in the Richmond Street bike lane that the you know the cycling volumes increase rapidly like they you know increase like by 300 percent or something like that so now you've got all these people that have been trained and now they're you know feeling comfortable riding to work and then all of a sudden you just take away this nice safe piece of infrastructure that they're so used to riding on and uh, you know it creates kind of a really dangerous situation for them so the local advocacy group is trying to get you know something put in to make it safer for the for a short term for uh, cyclists to go through that intersection or that not intersection it's actually about a one kilometer 
stretch of Richmond. And then the next one is Adelaide. So the way that they work is that uh, Richmond is a one-way street, which goes in the, um, it goes west, and then Adelaide is the next one, and it's a one-way street that goes east. So they each have a, their own dedicated lane um, in their one way, which is just for, for cyclists to go in the same direction as traffic. So you really need bike lanes on both of them. And I found every, every time I've ridden on this part of Sherborne with my bike, I find that I end up getting stuck at so many red lights that they seem to have the intersections timed. They're, they don't seem to have their intersections timed for the, the rate at which I ride my bike, unfortunately, but looks like I'll make this one. This was King Street. This is a, another two-way street uh, that has a streetcar track that runs along it. And then the next one here is Front Street, which hopefully I can make across before the... No, I'm going to miss that one. <laughs> so Front Street, it actually used to be, at one point, I don't know about in this section, but I learned in history that um, Front Street used to be where the lake shore was. It used to be like the last street before the water. And at some point, they expanded Toronto out and they filled in parts of the lake shore. Um, to, uh, you know, extend the downtown area. Um, as I said, I'm not sure if it was this part of Front Street, but certainly, you know, closer to the downtown. Um, Front Street used to be the, the end of the, the land of, of uh, before water. But we're pretty close to the water anyway now. So this is the newest portion of the, uh, the Sherborne cycle track. They started installing it in about 2012 I believe but it took them you know quite a few years to finish it they only put this part in um, I think it was finished last year and as they continued and made parts like they kind of got increasingly better I think in terms of the quality of it because they were you know basically they listened to the people that had their criticisms of the the first section and they improved upon it since then but all in all I think it's a it's a pretty pretty good place to ride your bike so we're just about to go under our two bridges the first bridge is the rail corridor where all of the trains come in and out of Union Station which is our main main train station in Toronto and then the second bridge is the Gardner Expressway which is an elevated expressway which goes across the bottom of downtown Toronto and underneath the uh, elevated highway is Lakeshore Boulevard which is all these cars that you see here on Lakeshore Boulevard and this has always been a bit of a funny intersection because it's such a such a wide road that they let the pedestrians go early before they let the cars go so you can see that there's a, a white walk signal ahead, but the, the rest of it, like the, the regular traffic lights are still red. While we're waiting for this, I may as well point my bike over this way and I can show you the CN Tower, which is a big part of Toronto's iconic skyline. Which was at one time the world's tallest standing structure, freestanding structure. Still the tallest thing in North America, I'm pretty sure. Certainly the tallest thing in Canada. Over on the left hand side there's a little park. 
can't remember the name of that park at this moment. And this road here is called Queen's Key, which is the very last road before the water. And along here, you can see there's a, a multi-use trail. That's called the Martin Goodman Trail. And at some point, I'd really like to get down here and make a video showing the entirety of the Martin Goodman Trail. But I'll just continue on riding through here. This is the Lakeshore campus of uh, George Brown College, Community College. And there you can see the sparkling blue Lake Ontario water. Lots of little sailboats puttering around in the harbor there. It's a fair bit of wind today, so I'm sure it'd be a good day to be out sailing. And beyond the sailboats, beyond the water, you can see there's some trees out there. And that's Toronto Islands. There's actually an island which sits just off the shore of Toronto, which is Toronto Island. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed joining me on this video tour of the Sherborne Cycle Track. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video. And thanks for watching.